Welcome back guys to survival multiplayer game series. This is episode 46. In the previous video we added these trees and made functionality so that we can chop them down. And uh, right now we have a few small issues. One of them is that the trees are not replicating properly. So let me show you real quick how we can fix this really simple. So we can select the tree, edit the tree blueprint. And uh, the fix is very simple. All we got to do is select all of our components and we need to select component replicates. And we need to do this. Uh, well, we don't need to do this for all of the components technically, but uh, I think it's better if we do because we might do some adjusting later on and uh, this might come in useful if we already are replicating this and that means we will have less issues. So select all of your components and replicate them. Also in the previous video I already spoke about it that we need to replicate the movement and that we need to replicate the actor itself. So. With this being done, our tree is now replicating properly and if it falls, the other player sees the location as well. Another issue that we had was that um, we can destroy the tree with one hit. Basically, if we equip an axe, walk up to a tree and move the mouse really quickly. Well, this time it was with two hits, but if you would do this really, really fast, yeah, there it goes. We can destroy it with one hit. Also, as I can see now that we can see through the tree from the bottom part. So that is also a quick fix. So let's fix the textures real quick. I'm going to select the bark material and all we got to do is select that this is a two sided mesh. We can save this and it should uh, work properly now. So to fix the issue with the HP of the tree so that we would not be able to kill this with one hit, what we got to do is um, we need to set a variable in our third person character blueprint. So I'm going to add a new variable and I'm going to call this have we hit. And basically this is going to represent whether we have already damaged an actor during this uh, attack event. So. Uh, first, I'm going to set this back to false and we need to do this in our mouse left click. There we go. So mouse left button, mouse left pressed. And uh, let me see now in the event graph. So here we have this server replicate attack. So this is going to run automatically one we, once we uh, do the attack animation with our axe or uh, pickaxe. And over here, once we are done with the attacking, we are going to set this variable back to false, like so. And also what I'm going to do is I'm just for the safety measure measures, I'm going to replicate this variable as well. And now in our tree oak tree blueprint, so on the component begin overlap over here from our third person character, what we can do is we can get have we hit. And then we are going to do a if branch check to see if we have hit something. And actually, let me see, we might. So first we will run this. Are we attacking? And if we are attacking, then we are going to check if we have hit something already. And if we have hit something already, we are not doing anything. But if we have not, then we can set this variable. So let's set have we hit. And I'm going to set this over here. So from the false, we are setting this to true. And then we can connect our hit and actor. There we go. And I'm also going to do some small rerouting uh, since this is getting kind of messy for our third person blueprint. So make sure you don't make the same mistake as I just did by rerouting this target over here. As you can see, it goes through there and this is a other actor. So this needs to cast to the uh, axe, not the third person character. So uh, yeah, make sure you, do, you don't connect this to your third person character. I just did and I was wondering why isn't this working? But yeah, this is working. So these are the third person character nodes and this is the node for our axe. So this target needs to be the other actor right here. So with this being done, we would go to the game now and uh, let's chop down some trees. So if we try to bug this, as you can see, the tree is not falling. We need five hits since the damage is 20 and we have a um, pickaxe that the axe that does a uh, hundred damage. So this is 
the tree is destroyed and we can try to move this around a bit if you want to as you can see it does replicate in the top uh, you can see a little bit you can see that this is replicating properly so the next thing what we will do is spawn a pickup so my pickup will be this log right here you can find the link somewhere in my previous tutorials probably um, and uh, if you can't find it just leave a comment down below I will uh, find it for you and uh, post the link then but if you already probably have this if you have watched my tutorials then it's not an issue for you but what I will do is edit this pickup log and I will change the uh, scaling of this a little bit because I want this to fit more of uh, my tree kind of so I will make this like 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 and also what we need to do is select our class defaults and here we have our item data and this build scale then needs to be to 0.4 as well so that it would match properly and now with this being set up let's spawn the pickup and uh, technically we could use our drop items we could modify this right here with a um, uh, with a switch which will give us like, like some kind of parameter then we can decide whether this is the uh, death pickup uh, death item drop or just a regular item drop but what I will do is simply copy these nodes right here I don't need the bottom one so I'll copy this right here and as you can see this gave me a warning because the names match so I'm gonna rename this to spawn items and we are going to use a pretty similar method um, only difference will be that I will add another input to this and I'm gonna call this rota rotation and this needs to be a rotator and we can connect this to our transform right here so this is all set up now what we can do is uh, we also need to run this on server right so this was ran on server yeah so this needs to be ran on server as well so we can compile and save this this is all set up and now in our tree oak let's see so here is our tree dying so as this uh, server third person character we can do the spawn items there we go and let's begin with location and rotation what I will do is drag in my static mesh and as this static mesh I will get world actually I will get the world transform get world transform and then we can right click this and split the pins and we can get the location and the rotation and the scaling will come automatically from our item data and now we need to create this item data so I will drag from this inventory and I will do make array and we need an input for this so I will just simply promote to variable and I'm gonna call this drop item let's call this drop item one and if you want you can add multiple items to the same tree so you can add plus 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 and you can give this multiple drops and also uh, to make things maybe even more simple if you have many uh, drops then you could just simply create an array which will contain all of these items but as of right now I'm just simply going to create one and so we need to compile this then we can select this and we can get this item data so what I will do is open up my pickup log again select the class defaults and I will just simply copy the item data from right over here so that I don't have to retype this all the time so I can just simply paste this compile and save so our variable is now set up and the items should spawn so let's test this thing out uh, also one last thing that I forgot to do is so we are spawning the item um let's see we need a little bit of a delay otherwise this will be very awkward we will destroy a tree and it will instantly disappear and the pickup will spawn so what I will do is create a delay after we simulate the physics so that our tree has time to fall and let's make this like two seconds and after two seconds we will spawn a item and then we can as our uh, server character we can do the what was it called destroy me yeah server destroy me connect this and the reference is ourselves 
And just in case if you haven't watched the previous video and you don't have the event, this is the event. Basically, this is just a custom event which is ran on server, which checks if the actor is valid. And if it is valid, then it's simply just going to destroy the actor. And this is used so that both of the, all of the characters would see uh, that the actor gets destroyed and disappears from the world. Otherwise, um, this will not replicate if you don't run that on server. So. Let's pick up this character this time. As you can see, my logs got smaller. So let's X and let's chop down some trees. There we go. Boom. The tree fall, fell, but we ran into a small issue. The delay was too small. So let's make this maybe like four seconds. Or, yeah, seems pretty good. So four seconds. Let's check this out once more. And the tree has fallen. And the pickup has been spawned. So there we go. So this is all set up nicely. And since this was a pretty fast tutorial, I'm going to show you some more things with the trees. So what I will do now is add a bunch of trees to this world. And then uh, we will proceed. So I've added a bunch of trees. If I look over here, this is still pretty good. And if I look over there, I'm getting quite a bit of lag. Um, and I'm getting it on both screens now because, well, I'm running two games on the same PC with one video card. So um, yeah, I just simply, I'm not allowed to look in that direction right now because my video card just simply can't handle all of that. And that, it, that is because we are drawing our uh, meshes that are even like super, super, super far away. And uh, these uh, trees are, no, well, not really like super highly uh, demanding, but well, they do take some resources. And if we have a lot of them and they all need to be loaded, then well, I guess my PC just can't handle it. So what we can do about it is select our uh, tree and for our static meshes that actually have a mesh, we can scroll down till we find the rendering. You might have to um, open this up because it might be like super small for you. So visible hidden in game. So you can pop this open when we have this advanced info. And what we need to do is search for this desired max draw distance. And this basically determines how far away from the uh, character the tree should be in order for it to be loaded. So I will type in, let's see, let's type in like 5000 or Let's type in like 10,000 for the tree uh, bark itself and for the leaves I will do like 5,000. So now if we would compile and save this, let's press play. You can see I have no issues. I don't see any trees over there. And maybe the distance might be a bit small because I had trees over here as well. Well, no, actually I think this is a pretty decent distance. The trees are getting loaded depending on the on the distance from the character. So the first thing we see is of course the trees themselves and only then we can see the leaves after a while. So if we walk up closer you can see the trees leaves are popping up as well. So this is pretty nice. We no longer get this very bad lag. So I'm gonna add uh, another quick detail for this thing uh, for our trees what we could do is we could ch change the scaling of the trees so that they wouldn't all be exactly the same and technically we could also rotate them in different uh, um, yeah rotations uh, but in my case well the rotation is pretty useless since the tree looks pretty much the same from all angles but if you have trees that are having some like bends or whatever uh, then I think the rotation will do a really good thing and what we can do for this is on our begin play for our tree we could select the base component and we could do set world I'm gonna do the scale but also you could do the rotation as well and for this scaling we could do let's see do we have a random for the vector so random I can't find it as of right now. I do know that there is one definitely for the rotation, but what I will just do now is I will make a vector and I will do a random. 
So random float in range. And I'm going to connect this to all of these. And the range is going to be, let's say, so max is 1 as we have right now. And let's make this like 0.4. So compile and save this. And this is as simple as it gets. And yeah, there we go. So we can see that the scalings are different. So this is a bit smaller. These are a bit higher. This again is a bit smaller. So this is going to be it for this video. Like always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. It keeps me motivated. Thanks for the comments that I received lately. A lot of people are really uh, enjoying my uh, tutorials. This is really good. We are up to an episode 46 already, uh, getting close to a 50. And uh, yeah, let's keep the show rolling. So thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.